start when you're ready. So now that we've talked about how you can describe relationships between stereochemical isomers, we should also really kind of think about how we could describe this in more of a, not necessarily quantitative fashion, but something that can be transferred between one another. Rather than having to describe this as a molecule that's an ethane, where on carbon one there's both the hydroxyl group and the bromine, but then the methyl group is sticking out compared to the hydrogen, it's a little bit cumbersome. So what we can do is start to name these stereocenters and we talked about alkane nomenclature before where we name things as being one or two in terms of the carbon number, but now we can also describe the relationship of how these four substituents are, or, are oriented around that chiral carbon center. And so what we're going to do is, first of all, recognize that this is a chiral center. There are four different substituents around it. If we think about those substituents, right, we have a bromine, an oxygen, a carbon, and a hydrogen, and ways that we can rank these substituents would be by atomic number. So bromine is going to have the highest atomic number, that'll have the highest priority. Then comes oxygen, carbon, and hydrogen. So what we're going to do is take substituent number four and place it in the back. Conveniently, it already is in the way that I've drawn this molecule. It's in a dashed bond. And now if we look at those substituents one, two, and three, and we connect the dots between them, what you can see is that we're connecting them in a clockwise fashion. And it, when you do that, you connect it in a clockwise fashion, you see that this particular configuration is an R configuration. It stands for rectus. All right. If we think about the mirror image of this molecule, let me draw that. Hydrogen is still in the back. The same priorities are still true. Atomic numbers haven't changed. Bromine is one, hydroxyl group is two, that methyl carbon is three, hydrogen is four. Substituent of priority number four is in the back. And so if we connect the dots, you can see that now, with this enantiomer, we're going counterclockwise. And we'll, so we call this an S configuration. All right. So. That's really all you're going to do, but you should be able to take every stereocenter and name it as either having an R or an S configuration. So there are a couple molecules then at the bottom of the page that we can talk about how to assign that. All right. So say, for example, you had this 2-butanol. All right. This is, in fact, a stereocenter. There are four different substituents on that carbon. Remember that just because only one is shown doesn't mean that the fourth one, hydrogens, we don't often have to say. And if we think about it, we have an oxygen, a hydrogen, a carbon, and a carbon. And so oxygen has the highest atomic number. We know that hydrogen has the lowest. So we've got priorities in one and four already set. But what about these two? So this carbon happens to have three hydrogens attached to it. This carbon has two hydrogens because it's a CH2 group, as well as another carbon. So there's a point of difference now between substituents. This ethyl group will have a higher priority than the methyl group will. And so then, again, priority number four, that substituent is already placed in the back. You can connect the dots, one, two, and three. You can see that we're going in a clockwise fashion. So it is an R configuration. And what you would do to the name that you've got here is put R in front of it in parentheses. So this would be R to butanol. Okay. We can look at some of the other examples that are listed here. So we could look at, say, alanine as an amino acid. Okay. And here, though, what we have to recognize is that our hydrogen is coming out. So now if we look at these and we try and assign some priorities, we've got a difference of nitrogen, carbon, carbon, and hydrogen. So nitrogen has the highest atomic number. Hydrogen has the fourth. If we think about these other two, we've got a carbon here with three hydrogens attached to it. When we think about this particular carbon atom, what we're going to do is we're going to look at bonds, right? So there's a sigma bond to an oxygen. There's another sigma bond to an oxygen. And then there's a pi bond. And so what we'd say for these four bonds that are connected to that carbon, we have an oxygen, an oxygen, a hydrogen. You can see that there's a point of difference. So the carboxylic acid is going to have a priority number two, that methyl group a priority number three. Now we have a slight problem. What is it that we're going to do? Somehow we need to figure out 
how to put priority number four in the back. All right, and there's a couple of different strategies and these are things that you're gonna need to work out for what is the best method for you. Okay, we could actually rotate the whole molecule and flip it over. Some people like this, some people don't, some people lose the stereochemistry in the process. So that's not always a good one. We could look at this molecule, we could assign our priorities. One, two, three. When we connect the dots, four is already in the back. And we would look at this and say this is counterclockwise, so this is going to be an, uh, not an R, sorry, an S configuration. All right. The other way to look at it is to say from here, one, two, and three, when I connect the dots, these are in fact an R configuration, but because it's backwards, it has to be the opposite. All right. The third way is for you to build a model yourself, right? Figure out what it's going to be, put priority number four in the back, and then connect the dots yourself. But some way you got to figure out how is it that you can figure out the priorities and the, uh, how to connect those dots if in fact priority number four is not in the back, okay? So uh, I think the last example that we'll just show here is the methylcyclopentane, okay? And so what would the configuration of this molecule look like? Well, you'd have a methyl group and a hydrogen, and then a CH2, but they're not different yet. They're bonded to CH2s. Those are not different yet, so they're actually identical. This molecule, as it turns out, is achiral. And even though you have a wedge, that doesn't necessarily mean that the molecule is chiral. And so there's no way to name it as being an R or S stereocenter. So I think that's probably a good place to stop.